Y'all, it's the biggest op awards, and the winner is 50 Cent. He has to be Diddy's biggest op. In these past couple of weeks, he has been putting his back into it and trying to expose Diddy, as well as some of his past crimes that he got away with, or at least that's what Diddy thought. But now that 50 Cent is spilling his tea on him, it looks like Diddy wasn't as slick as he thought he was trying to commit these alleged crimes. Well, the latest tea that 50 Cent is now spilling has to do with how Diddy allegedly put a hit out on Jamie Foxx because Jamie was spilling all the tea in Diddy's free coughs, and it was making Diddy look bad. Even worse, 50 revealed that Jamie was about to reveal the real deal that he saw during these free coughs. And 50 Cent is claiming that Diddy tried to take Jamie out to protect himself and his free coughs. So what type of alleged crazy secrets did Jamie allegedly have that Diddy was willing to kill enough to hide? And is Jamie really going to file his own lawsuit against Diddy? Whew, join the list. Now, if you've been following this whole media circus surrounding Diddy these past couple of months, then you probably know all about his FOs, 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 these freak offs, and the crazy things that he did to other people and forced other people to do to him and themselves, allegedly. The rumors about Diddy's parties have been going around since the 90s, but it wasn't until last year that we got to know just how bad they were, and y'all, they were real bad. Way worse than we could have ever imagined. Cassie's lawsuit was the first time we got a real insight into this parties because she set the ball rolling for Diddy's downfall. She went all out in her lawsuit, talking about her time with Diddy and what a horrible experience it was for her. She talked about how Diddy had a taste for male escorts, and according to her, he would force her to go on escort websites, hire black male escorts with BBCs, and then force her to be intimate with them while he watched. And allegedly, he wasn't just watching. He was also deriving a sort of pleasure from it because he would direct the freak offs telling her and the escorts what he wanted them to do, and he would also record them. But interestingly, Cassie wasn't the only victim who accused Diddy of recording these crazy actions, because Lil Rod also exposed Diddy for the same thing, saying that Diddy always had a camera during these parties. Born of 50 Cent and Jamie Foxx himself, Jamie was often behind the camera at these parties, so he had full knowledge of what was going on. But unlike most people who attended these parties, Jamie didn't know how to keep his mouth shut, and that's how he ended up on Diddy's bad side, allegedly, to the point where Diddy allegedly tried to have him murdered. He once talked about the craziness at Diddy's parties and how Diddy trusted him enough to have a behind the scene camera, recording this freaky stuff that was happening at the party. You know, you couldn't even get in this party, so the way I would get in this party is I show up with a camera. Puff, yo, you gotta let me film this, the whole thing. We need to document this, Playboy. But the interesting thing about this is that according to 50, the feds have been looking at Diddy and his shady parties for a long time, but for obvious reasons, they had to keep these investigations secret. This explains the crazy raids at Diddy's houses up by Homeland Security a couple of weeks ago. But Diddy doing freaky stuff is his business. And as long as it's consensual and not with some young, underage people, I guess it's not a big deal, right? I mean, it's wild, but then if they're adults, it should be all right. But allegedly, that's not the case because many of Diddy's victims didn't consent to these freak offs, and he allegedly forced it on them against their will. Cassie said it, Lil Rod said it, and according to 50 Cent, there are a lot more people who Diddy either forced into freak offs or tried to force into freak offs. Allegedly, his former bad boy artist, Mace Sembetha, is one of those people. Mace and Diddy have been on bad terms since Mace left Bad Boy Records. And according to 50 Cent, it's because allegedly Diddy tried to push him onto one of those freak offs during his time under Bad Boy Records. Allegedly, this caused the beef between Mace and Diddy, eventually leading Mace to cut ties with the label. 50 claimed that Mace allegedly saw a lot of weird and terrible things during his time with Bad Boy Records, and this is the real reason that Mace left the rap industry. He had to find God, y'all. And when he was ready to get back into rap, he fought Diddy until he was released for his contract. But Diddy didn't let him go like that because allegedly he refused to pay Mace the money he owed him. And like that wasn't bad enough, 50 claimed that Diddy went about bad mouthing Mace in the industry and got him blacklisted. You know, I did one album with Mace. One album. How much money do you think I owe this guy? One album? And then he became a fake pastor and went and conned people? And then y'all gonna let him throw dirt on the God's name? But luckily, Mace was able to find his own footing in the industry, and even though he never got his money from Diddy, he escaped with his dignity. But y'all wanna know the wild truth about this? 
is that according to 50, people in the industry have known as far as back as the 90s about Diddy being on the DL and how he allegedly forces other young men to engage in DL activities with him. Suge Knight first dropped some hints about this in the 90s, claiming that Diddy was on the DL. But at the time, people didn't believe him because he and Diddy had that bitter East Coast, West Coast rivalry going on. And they thought that he was just taking cheap shots at Diddy with fake rumors. Don't even get me started on 50 Cent because he has been determined to expose Diddy for longer than I can remember. There was this time when he posted an awkward picture of Diddy and Rick Ross and he captioned it, something ain't right. 50 Cent stays pressing Diddy's neck at 24 seven. And even when he was sick in the hospital, he still found some time and strength to throw some more shade at Diddy saying, I can no longer help you guys. Soon you will all be gay and happy. You are now left under the leadership of Puffy Daddy. Report to the nearest rainbow. Honestly, it just kind of makes sense that 50 is keeping his foot on Diddy's neck, especially with what we know about 50's baby mama Daphne Joy and how she's been working as an S worker allegedly for Diddy for a long time, which is low key humiliating for 50, considering that Diddy is his biggest op. While 50 Cent still has more stories to tell and he claimed that Diddy allegedly pretends to mentor young and up and coming rappers in the industry. But instead, he allegedly uses this as a cover to do some bad things to them. And 50 gave some examples like YK Osiris, actor Orlando Brown and Empire star Brashear Gray. Y'all know that these guys had in common, right? They were all supposedly mentored by Diddy at one point or another in their careers. And allegedly they all ended up being SA'd by him and had their careers ruined when they tried to stand up to him. Bashir Gray was one of those young breakout stars in the hit show Empire. And everyone believed that he was going to make something of himself after the show, but unfortunately that never happened. And 50 is now accusing Diddy of allegedly ruining Bashir's life because Bashir wanted to stop those freak off. Bashir's introduction to Diddy came through his manager Charlie Mack, who helped him land his role as Hakeem Lyon on Empire. Actually, Charlie first introduced Bashir to Will Smith, who then became a mentor to Bashir. Bashir told Will that he actually had dreams of being a rapper and not an actor, so Will decided to do him a solid and introduce him to Diddy, who was one of the most influential figures in rap music. And at that time, we thought this might be perfect. But looking back at all the allegations of misconduct between Diddy and Will and the men they mentor, we should have seen the red flags waving in the air. There were whispers on the streets that Diddy allegedly sabotaged Bashir's career when Bashir grew tired of the wild activities. And it might explain why Bashir never hit it big after Empire. And Jaguar Wright actually backed this up. And young men have left their house fucking screaming to get away from them in their mentorship. Bashir Gray. <laughs> left that house fucking screaming. August the only one that stayed and I guess he was really sick, he needed a dog. But aside from Jaguar Wright, according to 50, one of the people who suffered Diddy's wrath the most was Jamie, because Jamie almost lost his life. Jamie faced a severe health crisis last year, experiencing a medical emergency on a movie set. While his family chose to keep the details under wraps, Jamie's daughter Corinne stepped in with a statement saying, from the Fox family, we wanted to share that my father, Jamie Fox, experienced a medical complication yesterday. Luckily, due to quick action and great care, he is already on his way to recovery. We know how beloved he is and appreciate your prayers. The family asks, for privacy during this time. But we soon found out that things weren't what we thought they were when several people in the industry who seemed to be in the know kinda hinted that he was a victim of an attack. For example, Steve Harvey said, <laughs> I don't even really know what happened, man. I was just stunned because Jamie's fit. This dude, he don't do nothing, man. This dude is fit. So I was concerned, man. So I hope everything works out. I'm pretty sure it will. Martin Lawrence also said, I mean, I wish him the best. He's in my prayers every night. He's not only one of the best entertainers we have out here, but he's a great person and he's a genuine person. So please pray for him. Leah Long also tweeted, my heart is heavy this morning. Praying for our brother Jamie Foxx. My love and prayers run deep for you and your loved ones. Hashtag pray for Jamie Foxx. But y'all, it got even weirder when the reports claimed that the police paid a visit to Jamie in the hospital and he allegedly told them that happened to him and it wasn't an accident because somebody had actually tried to unalive him on purpose. 
A source said, Jamie Foxx told the cops somebody is trying to kill him. I'm telling you, man, it's like they have a time on these celebs' lives. I believe them. Well, it didn't take long before people started to add two and two together, and they definitely came up with four. They pointed fingers at Diddy and accused him of allegedly having something to do with Jamie's situation. Now, people think that the real reason Diddy is coming for Jamie is Jamie's confession of how he had Diddy's tea and how he was going to expose the crazy things that Diddy had been up to for years. But things took a different turn when an insider came up with another narrative about the story, claiming that Jamie not only used to be a big H-O-E back in the days, but he was also bisexual, allegedly. Back in the 90s, my mom nicknamed Jamie Foxx. Like, if you take the O out of his name and replace it with a U, that's what she used to call him. But to his face, it's like a ha-ha joke because he used to bang so many guys and girls in Hollywood. But y'all, that's not even the craziest part of the story because this next revelation is shocking. And he used to have these things called butt naked basketball games, okay? He would invite over a lot of like Hollywood's elite to his house for a basketball game, but it was men only. And they would be like, oh, we're just gonna get naked and play basketball. It's like, oh, ha ha, let's get naked and play basketball together, which is weird. And this happened in the 90s. Yeah, it's a pretty wild story, but fans believe that it's still not right for Diddy to allegedly try to take somebody's life. And they left comments saying, I'm starting to think Diddy is truly a megalomaniac. That brother is a menace to society and somebody needs to change quickly before he causes someone to lose their life. This is not a game at all. Like Cat Williams said about Jamie, how do you have a mysterious illness? And Diddy just nasty as heck. And he needs to be punished for it. He destroyed them young guys' lives. Put him in jail. Whew, well, there's a lot going on here. And I need to know what y'all feel about it. What do y'all feel about Jamie Foxx and his mysterious illness? And do you think that it has something to do with Diddy? Drop your thoughts in comments below and then check out this next video.